12 years old, I carried an old 8 millimeter Mauser that my, my dad gave me. Granddad and my dad, they cut the stock off so it would fit me because I was pretty little, or everyone's little at 12. And I carried that gun uh, for several years and started hunting elk and deer with my granddad. You know, and to be honest with you, I, I never have been what I would consider to be a very good shot with a rifle. Um, hadn't, didn't have a whole lot of training. I mean, remember granddad and I would go up, uh, up uh, way up in the mountains to this old kind of a gravel pit. And every year, right before hunting season, we would buy a, a box of shells and uh, he'd take some targets out there and we'd, we'd pace off a hundred yards and set up some targets and shoot. And for me at that time, and for many years, a hundred yards was a somewhat formidable shot. I think a lot of it had to do with um, maybe having a rifle that was a little bit too big for me. Um, I shot some big rifles when I was young and developed a real bad kind of a fear of these big magnums. Um, the guys that I hunted with and grew up with, they, uh, uh, they were kind of a real macho group and, it, it, and your, your manhood was directly correlated with the size of the magnum that you would carry. And of course, you know, all the guys that we looked up to and some of the older men that were really good hunters would carry big 300 mags and 300 Weatherby mags and 340 Weatherbys and all that. So us kids, when we were at 16, 17, thought, well, that's what we want to have too. And that just further exacerbated the problem of developing for me a really bad flinch and basically a fear of those big guns um, that, um, well, wasn't exactly rational. So as time goes on and, and I would continue to hunt and continue to shoot and, and my, my results were always really disappointing. And I started thinking like, well, I have pretty good equipment and good optics and, you know, is it must be me. You know, maybe some people are just not inherently good at, at shooting rifles long distance. Um, and I felt that I fell into that category. So years fast forward later. And of course, you know, we started getting into kind of the YouTube culture and, and I am a big fan of a lot of the of the firearms channels and I enjoy watching Nothing Fancy and Iraq. 88 and Hickok and Tiberius Rex. I don't, however you pronounce that. Uh, and I started kind of watching those things and, and seeing these guys uh, making these phenomenal shots with rifles at like a thousand yards, 1200, 1700 yards in it. it was, to me, it was just mystifying. And I thought, man, how is that possible? With me struggling, I feel myself fortunate if I can do a softball sized group at 100 yards, I didn't think that I could ever shoot out to those ranges. So I started watching a lot of those videos and tutorials and I went through the whole series, the series that Rex did. He's got like a 20, over 20 part series of precision rifle shooting. And it was so detailed and so much uh, math and, and, and all of this stuff that it was, it, to me, it was just overwhelming. I, I appreciate guys that can put in the effort in, and to do all of that. But me, just knowing my personality, I'm just not that much into it. And for me to go through all that, that all of that, and all of that education, it was it was a barrier to me. It was just something that that I just thought, well, that's just not not for me. I wanted to do it, but it, I, I wasn't willing to put in that much effort and work. So, I got involved with the guys, uh, as you saw, maybe you know, a few months back, uh, Leopold. They invited uh, Mrs. W and I out to the Leopold Optics Academy, and for the first time in my life, um, with a I was able to shoot accurately out to 1,200 yards. It was really, really thrilling to me to be able to do that. It wasn't something that I thought that I would be able to do uh, and put so little effort into it. And it all came down to technology, technology in rifle calibers, technology in um, optics, and primarily technology in, in ballistics computers. So what this video, I'm sorry, it's gonna go a little bit long today. I, I'm just inviting you to come hang out I want to try something today. I have put together this rifle. I'll show you the equipment we have right here uh, because I wanted, I'm not a gun collector. I wanted one rifle that I could do everything with. And what my criteria was, was I wanted to have something that was high quality uh, that I could shoot accurately. I mean, absolutely lethal accuracy up to let's say 1200 yards. It's just an arbitrary number, but for me that, that was, that was kind of the number that I set. I wanted it to be under 10 pounds uh, and I wanted to be able to hunt with it, uh, to have something that, that was compact, portable, just one gun. My granddad always said, 
you know, he's, we've all heard this before, but be leery of the man that only has one rifle. Because what I found is having multiple rifles and optics and switching things around, I never really trusted any of them. I really never knew where I was at with them. I never was really very proficient with any one of them. And so I decided to sweep all of that away and let's just go with one rifle and let's master it. Let's see if we can master it, see if we can be deadly accurate at 1,200 yards. So what I've got set up here is, is I've got a range set up outside the homestead here out to 600 yards. I've got a brand new some brand new ammunition that I've never shot before. Um, and I've got a ballistics computer uh, made by Kestrel, which we'll go into here in a minute. And what, what I wanna show you is that how simple it is for just a common guy like you, like me, uh, without a ton of training, uh, that can be deadly precise and accurate uh, out to, well, we can go out to 600, 614 yards today um, with some tools that just sweep all of that other complication, everything out of the way and just make it connect the dots easy. It really is that simple. Let's uh, take a look at the equipment really quick and then we'll uh, see how well we can do with this new, uh, new ammo. Let's briefly cover the equipment that I'll be using. So the spotting scope is really important and the spotting scope uh, is a wonderful addition because it's 40 power and it helps me to see when I'm on target. But even more important than that is that it's got a matching reticle with the scope. And what that means is just a fancy way of saying that the, the crosshairs inside of the optic on my rifle are exactly the same crosshairs that are on this Mark IV Leupold optic. So if I'm spotting and I can see where I'm hitting on a target, I can measure that in the, in the optic and the spotting scope and make the adjustments in the rifle. And that's sitting on a Manfrotto carbon tripod. The one rifle to do all that I'll be shooting today is, uh, of course, my 6.5 Creedmoor I had built by TNT Armament in Nebraska. They did a fabulous job for me. We've got a 20-inch proof carbon barrel, and it's uh, based on a Remington 700 Action, rechambered, of course, in the Creedmoor. Uh, Badger Ordnance style, uh, or a clone, an M5 clone of the bottom metal with the magazine, and then, of course, the excellent Macmillan A3 stock. You can see here the color. This is moleskin I have on there. I'm going to Thunder Ranch to shoot with Clint Smith and um, shooting that many rounds, I wanted something that was soft on my delicate skin. Uh, so, and the optic, you probably haven't seen this before. This is uh, my new optic that I'll be using in the class. Uh, this is a Leupold Mark IV. There, focus, focus. Leupold Mark IV, first focal plane uh, in a 6.5 to 20 power with M5 turrets. This is a fabulous, fabulous optic. I have just absolutely fallen in love with it. So for the ammunition, now this is uh, gonna be a real test of, of uh, how well these ballistics computers work today. It is a new ammunition that I have not shot before. This is a Hornady Match. It's a 147 grain ELD. ELD match. What's really appealing to me for this ammunition, it came highly recommended to me from people that I really trust, is that it is, you can use it for hunting. You can use it for hunting or for target. That way I can just shoot one cartridge uh, and I don't have to worry about different ballistics calculations that I can know that I can target with this. It's super accurate for that and I can hunt with it, which really appeals to me. And a quick shout out to Brownells. Brownells uh, supplied the ammunition for this video. They sent me um, a couple cases and I wanna just give them a shout out and a thank you for that. One more thing that I've added to the rifle that I haven't talked about or shown before is um, this level bubble right here that folds out of the way. So this is, this is pretty important because you, it's hard to tell sometimes um, if your rifle is level. Uh, when you're lining up long shots. So it probably doesn't matter so much for these shorter ones, but it, it, what it does is you can just glance off to the side of your scope right there, right before you take the shot, and just be sure that you're shooting level, that the plane of your rifle barrel and your scope are all in line. If you've never seen one of these before, this is a Kestrel uh, ballistics calculator, uh, 5700, what is it, 5700 with ballistics, applied ballistics in it. Uh, the first time I saw a Kestrel, they're, they're not just for shooting. Uh, they, they use them for, it, they're really precise weather meters. Uh, the first time I started using them was probably about seven years ago or so. These are, um, have become almost essential with wildland firefighting um, for predicting weather and the growth rate of fire and spread. And I've grown to really trust them. And uh, it's been something that's been essential uh, for us as firefighters. Well, they, they started getting into applied ballistics and building these for, um, for long range shooters. And the guys at the Leupold Optics Academy, which were former spec ops guys, some, uh, you know, one of the guys that was teaching there uh, was one of the top snipers in the world. 
um, said that the that the guys that he works with in, in special special or special forces snipers uh, they're they're essentially living by these that they all use them they all trust them and it's just become something that is just a mandatory deal so what what it essentially does is is it takes all of that figuring all of the calculators and, and the map and the figuring and all that stuff out of the equation, it does it for you, and it tells you what to do. It's like I heard a guy in a video say, it's like a spotter in a can um, telling the shooter what to do. So um, let's set it up. I'm not gonna get into the technical details of this. I'm not an expert at this. I'm just a layman like you are that, that just has a desire to, I wanna shoot well. I don't, ha I don't have to shoot out to two miles, uh, but if I could shoot out accurately to a thousand yards, I would be a very happy, happy person. And this tool has made it possible for me. So let's, uh, let's get it set up and then uh, we'll start taking some shots. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So you don't have to use the Kestrel this way, but it, you can use it as a remote weather station. And it's not really practical if you're hunting and such, but for me where I'm shooting out here, if I want absolute accuracy and get as close as I can for one shot hits, I can set it up here on a tripod and it's actually transmitting real time uh, firing solutions to my phone up to <clears throat> I think 100 feet away or so. That way I can, if I'm shooting up at the house, the wind is not really accurate there, but if I put it out here more in the open field, now it's broadcasting real time. And not only that, but it's giving me real time weather changes. We have a storm front coming in, the barometric pressure, station pressure is changing rapidly right now. And this is taking that into, calcul or into consideration. And it's broadcasting to me, the shooter right at my rifle, exact, the exact, basically to oversimplify it, <laughs> I don't mean to complicate this. It's telling me how many times to turn the dials on the scope to hit the target. Don't be intimidated by this, guys. And remember, you don't have to use this whole phone thing. I know so sometimes it just it gets to be too complicated. You can do all this with just the Kestrel itself. Um, I'm just, just kind of showing you. It's just kind of fun to geek out on this stuff when you're when you have the time here. So this is our shooter screen, uh, or this is my my what we, we're going to call it my firing solution screen. It's got all my information on it. But um, we're zeroed at 100 yards. So the first shot we'll take is 100 yards just to double check our zero. But you can see right there we have a wind vane and it's giving me. Now my, uh, my uh, scope is set up in tenth of mils. So each click, there's 10 clicks per mil inside there. It's giving me a couple things here. It's giving me my, my elevation. This is set at 100 yards, right? There's the yardage. 100 yards should be no corrections whatsoever. A, a 0 0.03, which is so minuscule you wouldn't even fool with it. Uh, and then it's giving me the wind direction. But this, this whole thing is fig figuring everything in. It's taking the wind into consideration, the Coriolis effect, spin drift, all these things that I don't understand. It's doing it for me so that I can be accurate on target. Now, as we go out, we'll see right here, right there, we see our range. I can simply swipe this up here like this, and now you'll see that the numbers are changing. So if we go out to, let's say, uh, 600 yards here, right there, so we're at six, 603, close enough. Right there, see it's making those corrections and changes. So that's telling me that I need to come up 4.2 mils in elevation to hit my target and hold left 0.34. Now the windage is something that you know is kind of always changing and that's where the real art comes into it, but it gives you a baseline and gets you on target and you can start and then you can make corrections after that. But the elevation, if I put all my stuff in here correctly, should be absolutely spot on. So for our first shot, we're not going to need any uh, ballistics calculator because we're going to be shooting 100 yards and that's what we're zeroed at. So that's what, uh, so we'll just turn our scope turrets to zero on the elevation and windage. And we'll just check our zero right here at 100 yards uh, and see how close we are, see if we're on. You never know where you're at until you do three. Let's do three. All right, we'll go with that. That first shot I didn't like. All right, let's go out to 400. Doing some serious multitasking here with the flying the drone on the phone and doing the uh, ballistics calculations. Okay, so we're at the 400 yard target and I'm gonna dial in uh, 400. I've got the Kestrel out there feeding me real time weather information. And at the 400, all right, so it's telling me right here, I don't know if you can see that, I need to come up with my elevation 2.15, so I'm gonna come up 2.2, and a holdover for windage at 2.2 .2 mils. So it's just so simple. 
So, okay, so I need to come up 2.2. So I'll just turn my turrets up to 2.2. That's 22 clicks. One, two. And then for my windage elevation, I can dial that in the scope or I can just hold it. Okay, so my holdover was 0.2. So you can see that the Kestrel gave me at 400 yards the exact elevation that I needed spot on, uh, providing that I shot in the right spot. Uh, so when I see that, now I can just simply, I'm gonna hold over, I held over 0.1, one mil to the left. I'm gonna do the same shot here. I'm gonna hold 0.2 to the left and see where we come out. There you go. Let's do one more because it's just so much fun. We'll hold point to the left. Looks like I maybe jerk, jerk the trigger a little bit right there. I'm not a not a great shot, never have been. But I this uh, using this kestrel is almost like cheating. There we go, not too bad. All right. Now that was a 10 inch target. Now I've got a really hard one out there at 550 yards. That's a small one. I think it's only six inches. So that's a pretty small target for me at 550 yards. Uh, but let's see what the Kestrel tells us here. So if we roll this up here to, to 550 yards, right there, it's giving us a real time elevation of uh, 3.62, so I'll dial up my elevation at 3.6, and then uh, it's giving me a 0.3 holdover to the left, uh, so I'll start with that. This is 550 yards at a, as a really small target, so let's see how we do here. That's 550 yards. First shot, looks like the elevation that the Kestrel figured is perfect. I held over 0.4 for wind. Let's hold over 0.5 this time, see what we can do. Second shot. And one more. We'll try a hold over 0.4 again. It's just amazing. You know, for me, a 550 yard shot into a small target, that's just something that's never been possible before. And this, this it's with this system, it's just, it's just easy. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Let's push it out to 600. I think I jerked the trigger on that. Let's try that again here. Okay, a little bit strong on the windage. Looks like the elevation's right. The wind's really swirling, whipping around right now. The Kestrel's feeding me back real time. Now it's saying the holdover is a 0.4. So that's what's so nice about having it up there on the tripod. It's giving me real life feedback. 
right here at my shooting bench. So I can simply line up on the target. I can glance over. The holdover is 0.4 now. Oh, drone's coming back. <laughs> Low battery. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, proof's in the pudding. You can take someone like myself that is not a, not a great shooter, never has been, and using good quality optics and, and the Kestrel uh, to help uh, to get on target at those, for me, is, is, is a pretty long range. Um, is I, I just think it's miraculous and it's, it's just brought a, a pleasure and a joy uh, to shooting that I've, I've never had before and I, I, I don't even know where the limit is you know I, I can only shoot out to, to six what 614 15 yards from here but um, I have no doubt with a little bit of practice and probably very little practice um, I should be accurate out to 12 1200 yards uh, with this rifle uh, no problem and, and if I can shoot in in those parameters I am I'm absolutely thrilled. You'll notice that uh, on those targets, from what I've seen from the initial footage, I'll have to go back and look at it, but it looks like the elevations were spot on. I yanked a couple shots by, you know, bad fun fundamentals, but if you look at the elevation that was being fed back to me from the Kestrel, um, I mean, they're right in there. Uh, and once it's programmed in there, I mean, it's set. This gun is just dialed in, and then the windage portions of that, you know, that's just going to come with experience. That's on me. Uh, but even with my lack of experience, um, it gave me a reference point to start. Brand new uh, rifle, brand new ammunition uh, that I've never shot before, and to be able to get on targets at those ranges is, um, it's just so, so exciting. <laughs> so exciting. I'm just thrilled. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll put links to, um, you know, a couple of things that have really helped me with this, but um, this is something that you can do, and it's not witchcraft. Uh, it's repeatable. And it is a, um, it's just a wonderful thing. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. Hey there, subscribe to my channel and also press this bell icon.